What's going on internet? Whenever I start a new car audio project, I like to get a baseline measurement of a few of the very important aspects of the system. This helps me to determine a good plan for how to best improve the sound. Now in the case of Project Jeep Build, I have a factory head unit installed. Now luckily in this vehicle, the head unit is very easy to replace, and I intend to. But what if you were installing into a vehicle that the head unit was very integrated into the car and you couldn't easily remove it? So what if we either know that we have to use the factory head unit or maybe we like the factory head unit how do we know that it's gonna perform well when we add an aftermarket system? In this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of a few things that I looked at in order to establish a good baseline on Project Jeep Build. And I'm gonna talk about how I can use that baseline to best determine a plan for a great car audio system. When I hop into the vehicle, I first make sure that the balance, fade, treble, and bass are all set to their zero values. I'm going to start with checking the electrical phase of all the speakers in the vehicle. For this, I'm using the PT9. Links to this tool and everything else in the video will be down in the video description. Now the PT9 allows me to test a series of electrical pulses to see if the speakers are wired electrically in phase. The CD that comes with the PT9 plays three in-phase pulses and then one out-of-phase. Typically the light will be green, 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 red, but in this case I found that speakers in the vehicle are actually electrically out-of-phase and flash red, 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 green. Now there is nothing wrong with this, it is just important that all the speakers are consistently the same. There are unfortunately times when a speaker gets wired wrong from the factory or the vehicle may intentionally be designed with a speaker out of phase. We need to know this if we plan on grabbing the factory signal so that we don't have any issues down the line. As I'm doing these steps, I will write my findings down so that I can check them easily later. Next up, I'm using an audio control RTA to look at the frequency range and response of the electrical signal. Now take note that I said electrical signal. The wires are currently connected directly to the speaker wires, not a microphone, and I'm playing white noise. This allows me to see the frequency range of output from this particular channel of the amplifier. Now, I would say that this signal is relatively usable, but it does drop off in the bass frequencies and have some other valleys and peaks that I would like to see corrected. This tells me that to make the system sound best, I'm likely going to need a digital signal processor unit or another form of equalization. I test all the channels of the factory amplifier and I found that this is the case on them as well. I take pictures to refer to later. The next thing that I usually test is at what point the head unit creates distortion. For this task, I'm using an SMD and DMOR DD1. This device is purpose-built for detecting distortion, and later in the process I'll be able to use it for setting my amplifier gains. But for now, I can determine at what value the head unit distorts. The way this works is you play in a 1000 Hz tone and a 40 Hz tone and see at what value the DD1 distorts. I record this value because I want to make sure that later in the process I set the gains on the amplifier while the head unit is set to this value for maximum undistorted output. Finally, I use an RTA to take a measurement of the OEM acoustic response. For this, I am using Audio Control's new SA4100i microphone. This allows me to basically use an iPhone or an iPad as an RTA. I will have a full-blown video on this in the coming weeks. In this case, I am measuring the actual acoustic response of the vehicle. I like to do this just to establish a baseline for what the original system was. I can capture the screen and save details for a comparison later to show how the system has improved. With all the advancements in car technology, integrating with a factory head unit is something that we're going to have to get used to doing more and more often. Oftentimes this signal can be really complicated, so the days are gone where we just simply take a line output converter and attach it to the speaker wires. I plan to look at this a little bit more in some of the future videos. I actually recently finished building my OEM test center, so I can show you guys a little bit more about factory amplifiers and how we can integrate with them. What else would you guys like to see? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could smash that like button, I would appreciate that. 
A special thanks goes out to Emmanuel, EJ, Rory, Eddie, Truman, and Jerry, along with the rest of the Patreon support team. Patreon is kind of like Kickstarter, but it allows you to help support creators like myself. These guys help make the videos possible, and it helps me to do things like creating the OEM test center. It also allows me to directly interact with you guys and message each other back and forth, and I put up special secret videos on there from time to time. The fact is, if you're watching this late into the video, the majority of the rest of the people have left by now. So if you're interested, I would love to chat with you. You can check it out down below by clicking Patreon, or there's also a link down in the video description. Thank you for watching this video.